Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 16th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see our ridge is being flattened out here, but we still have another very warm day, downright hot day here for the Puget Sound and the Willamette Valley. Upper level low spins off the Northern California coastline, introducing thunderstorms again today across some of the central and southern Oregon Cascades. Could be starting some fires out there, but then we're going to bring a trough and some onshore flow here as we go through the weekend and start to bring things back down towards normal across the region, but that comes at a cost. The winds are going to pick up. We're going to increase some fire danger here across Pacific Northwest. We'll look at those details as well. And check out the smoke right now across BC. It's infiltrated into some of the valleys here. You can see it coming off the Cascades into eastern Washington. Oregon got a nice smoke coverage going on here as well. And if you're around one of these fires, it's very unpleasant. So yeah, that's kind of interesting stuff here, folks. Looks like we're starting to really increase the fire activity here across the region. You can even see some stratus here along the Washington, Oregon coast this morning, kind of infiltrating across some of Coquillam out there down the Oregon coastline as well. So interesting stuff there this morning. Taking a look at the temperatures yesterday. I mean, the Tri-Cities was at 109 yesterday, mid 90s across a lot of Puget Sound, some hundreds even into Southwest Washington, hundreds widespread across some of the Willamette Valley, very warm across some of the Washington coast here as the rest of the coast across Southwest Washington and Oregon was cooling down yesterday, still 93 out there towards Forks. And yeah, look at some of these temperatures in Eastern Washington, Oregon, and another very hot day again today for much of the region, except for May maybe the immediate coastline. You can see Seattle the last couple days, 94, 95. The record highs back in 2010 were 95 and 96. So we just missed both of them by one degree here. No precipitation for the last few days and none in sight really for Seattle coming up here. But we'll look at that in the forecast models, of course. And if you guys want a nice affordable weather station, click on the link down below. It's got a lightning detection system. It's all wireless and solar powered. Nice smartphone app. And you can see you can scroll across the entire planet here and see who else has one and check out their data as well. Or you can keep it all private too if you want. Now this is looking back at the Pacific Northwest. Check it out, Crater Lake, Klamath Falls, Lakeview under the gun again today. Some thunderstorm activity and some of it might be in the dry lightning variety here that could be starting some fire. So heads up for that. Look at Spokane. Nice cool down coming as we go towards the beginning of next week here. If you take Spokane, 101 today, but by Monday, maybe 79 there. So nice cool down here. Just hang on for a couple more days there. You can see Moses Lake and Omac downright roasting. Ritzville again the next couple days as well. Here we go with the isolated dry lightning you can see it across southern oregon but watch by day two man critical fire danger across eastern washington on into idaho and montana as well as so we kick on those onshore winds low relative humidity not much precipitation associated with any of those winds going across the area so heads up for that you can clearly see it now looking at the european this is last night's run there goes our ridge. It's kind of flattening out here. And by the time we get in towards Thursday night into Friday morning, the trough is going to be with us here. So we're at least going to get a break for a couple days here. And there's some pretty good model disagreement on how much we're going to warm up again next week. But it doesn't look like any kind of major heat wave. But look at this ridge, this just ridiculous ridge here across the central, por central portion of the country. You're probably going to be hearing about that in social media and the news out there. Just kind of an extreme ridge out there. So it's going to get really warm. Mm -hmm. So if you're out traveling, keep that in the back of your mind. Here we go, Port Portland, Oregon, GFS, probably up over 100 degrees again today before a 10 degree cool down tomorrow. And then even further on Friday, it's going to feel nice there Friday and Saturday. But you can see kind of seasonably warm here as we go through next week as well. We'll be sure to watch that as we go through the next couple of days. Here's Seattle. I don't know if we're going to get the 98 here, but the GFS again painting another mid 90s day coming up, up towards 90 degrees again tomorrow. And then that cool down as we go towards the weekend. <clears throat> but these temperatures still above average next week. We'll see how that trends tomorrow. This is looking at the European versus the GFS, and I'll show you why we have some low confidence on next week. So you can see the ridge flattening out. Trough comes. Pretty good agreement there. Upper level low down there across California. And then you can see it swing through, and then things start to get squirrely between the models here. You can see the GFS has a trough right out across the Pacific Ocean here, where the European has a ridge building and the trough a little bit closer. So some pretty good model disagreement as we look out into next week a little bit here. So yeah, we'll watch that tomorrow. We'll try to get some agreement between the models. <laughs> you can see it's pretty much yin and yang between the GFS and the European on where the trough and the ridge are going to exist. This is total precipitation. I'm just going to scroll through this and you can see not much expected unless you're across some of the Rocky Mountains of BC and Alberta out there. Some thunderstorm activity across Oregon the next few days here, but not much for Seattle or Portland right now. We'll watch this to see if anything changes with the trough around. You, maybe a shower might roll across, but yeah, not much as you can see here. This is looking at lightning density over the last 24 hours. If you saw the satellite imagery yesterday, you saw some of these bubbling up across central Oregon and the east slopes of the Cascades. Some of you guys might be 
be watching from some of these locations out there. So yeah, had some thunderstorm activity there today, a lot across California, but you can see nothing across Washington or BC that could be changing for BC here over the next couple of days though. And this is looking at the European. Let's just scroll through this today. As you can see that activity kick up again today across Oregon. And again, not a lot of precipitation associated with those lightning strikes there. So it could be starting some fires tomorrow, something similar across Southern Oregon. We introduced some thunderstorm activity here across BC tomorrow. Not much for Washington. Scroll through Friday. You might include some of the Blue Mountains here across Northeast Oregon, Idaho, Montana as well. So yeah, kind of typical stuff here during the summertime when we get do get these upper level lows around the area. Some of that monsoon moisture making its way up into Oregon, but not too much of a threat for Washington. However, as you look through Saturday, some of this is showing up across Vancouver Island. We'll see how that trends tomorrow. We'll watch that again. This is the 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook here all the way through August 25th. And you can see we are still prog to be above average here, but it's not looking like any kind of major heat wave or anything, at least right now. And this is the 6 to 10 day precipitation probability outlook. We might even get a slug of tropical moisture trying to move up the West Coast, even into Oregon here this time frame something we'll be watching here over the next couple of days we'll talk about that in some more detail probably either tomorrow or the next day and this is looking at the uh the significant fire potential you see Thursday and Friday, things really ramp up here across a lot of the region. Critical burn environment and the lightning strikes. You can see them kind of embedded in there in the red for the potential for dry lightning out there as well. So yeah, especially east of the Cascades and across the Cascades, really be careful because a lot of these fires are human caused, of course. This is looking at the European. We're checking out winds here at 100 meters just off the surface. And you can see as we go through today, we're kicking that onshore flow, but winds aren't too strong. But as we go through tomorrow, look at these winds increase across eastern Washington, across the ridges of the Cascades, east slopes, coming down the Strait of Juan de Fuca, Strait of Georgia there as well. And that's really going to introduce some dangerous fire weather here across portions, mainly east of the Cascades. This would be shown Friday early afternoon there. And look at some of these relative humidities. I'm just going to scroll ahead to Friday afternoon here. And you can see some of these single digit relative humidity values out there. So it's going to be like a tinderbox out there, folks. Be careful. Uh, here we're looking at the El Nino watch here. You can see us continuing to climb as soon as we pass this one line here that means we're in moderate el nino territory kind of bobbing and weaving up and down here but the overall trend is definitely upwards we're almost to 1.4 here and once we hit 1.5 we'll be in strong el nino conditions there at least according to the temperature across the pacific ocean anyway this is looking at the sea surface temperature it doesn't look like anything too crazy but this tongue of warm water here is very unusual along the west coast and i'll show you what i mean here in a moment we tend to get this current here out of the north and the northwest down across the Pacific Ocean here. So it tends to be cooler water here versus if you're on the east uh, coast here or on the western Pacific where, the, of course, the current is going to flow in the opposite direction. So it kind of keeps things relatively cool here. But this is pretty warm water off the coast. And you can see it here in the anomaly map. Very warm water. It doesn't help with the overnight lows, especially across some of the coastal areas here. Not cooling down as much as you normally would. But anyway, yeah, to that upper level low, watch out for those lightning strikes today. We are going to cool down, hang on for a couple more days here across the region. We'll cool down this weekend here, and then we'll try to see if we can get some model agreement on what's going to transpire as we go through next week as well. So yeah, anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe, turn your notifications on. And if you want that weather station, click on that link down below for 7% off. And I'll, we'll do this again tomorrow, and I'll talk to you guys then.